Hi, welcome to my office. Before the pandemic, I had the idea of creating a series of vlogs about working in my home studio. And I shot a bunch of footage of different aspects of it that I was going to put together into a video and then promptly forgot about them. So I uncovered them today and I've put them together in kind of a semi-coherent manner to give you a little introduction to a younger Joe Ferrace telling you all about how his studio works back before the pandemic. And geez, that's the same way it works right now. So stay tuned. Here it comes right at you. Welcome to my studio, or as Sir Richard Attenborough might say, welcome to Jurassic Park. I always want to say that. My home studio is located in the basement of my home. It's finished. It's 11 feet wide by 50 feet long. There's a 45 degree angle if you saw in the intro shot, or with a doorway, which means I always have to move one of the lights out of the way when models come in and out. Sometimes I'll put little marks on the floor to help them remember where they are. And uh, the ceilings are about nine feet. So compared to my former studio in my home, which wasn't really formal at all, it's a big improvement. This is why I work with three lights. They're all from Halsey Buff. In the back of the room, the first light you saw me turning on the intro is a DigiB 800. I have it uh, with a uh, umbrella, a square umbrella, and I'll put a link in the uh, below that you can click on to see. It's a very nice little semi-hexagonal uh, umbrella, actually. I have it set at 1.7 minus 1.7 using the kind of inverted uh, system that the DigiB offers. On this side, camera right, is another DigiB 800, which was a gift from my wife, which is very nice. It's, um, on it is mounted a Fluent Limited uh, wafer softbox. It's a hexagonal box. It's really a pretty amazing device. It was created by uh, one of the true lighting geniuses of our time. Gary Register, they're made in Colorado, right up the road from me, maybe you know, 60, 70 miles away, I don't know, as the crow flies. They're beautifully made, and the big thing about them is that they're large. They come in three different sizes. I'll put some links below so you can uh, check them out yourself. This is kind of the middle size, like 48 inches or thereabouts. It's a hexagonal shape. But they're very thin, they're very thin, and that means it'll take up a lot of space, and I really don't have a lot of space down here anyway. The power setting on this one is a minus 2.5, and that only really means something if you're uh, familiar with the, the DigiB settings. On this side, camera left, is an alien bee, which was the first light I got from Pulsey Offer. This whole thing is it's flickering for some reason. Uh, this whole, uh, whole setup, it started with this original Alien B, which is an Alien B uh, 
800 feet, I think is the number. It sat on a half power. I pulled it in closer to me than I normally would for a uh, portrait shoot, but uh, so I could light myself up. And it, three of them together, an ISO 200, which is the native setting of uh, the mirrorless cameras that I tend to use these days for shoots, uh, produces an aperture around f8, which is kind of like, I think, a sweet spot for me to use in this studio because it provides uh, adequate depth of field and uh, a lot of versatility. I, I like the background you see here is from Savage. It's one of their vinyl backgrounds. It's Infinity. This is their gray background, which is really great um, for a couple of reasons. It's neutral as can be. And it'll enable you to, or even on this video, uh, to use it as a great color correction. I use the Picto color system. And if there's anything a little out color, I'll uh, click on that background and it zaps the skin tone perfectly. And I'll put a link below for also for the picture color. Oh, it's called Portrait. Oh, geez, it just ran, up, ran out of my head. But anyway, it's a great little plugin for color correction. So this really is what amounts to my working space. And in weeks to come, I hope to share more things, including some real practical shoots. I really would like to have like an interview with a model, uh, integrate that into uh, the actual shoot, and show you how I work under real world. Got a hint of that in the intro, but uh, I think uh, in future vlogs to come, I think you'll find something even more interesting. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you come back again, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.